I'm chatting to Tessa Khan. Welcome to Be Your Dream. Thank you. Now it's great to have you here today and I want to talk about you as a woman. It's Women's Month. You're also a woman entrepreneur. So I believe you have a wonderful story to tell to uplift other women. Please do share. Wow. Do I have a story? <laughs> <laughs> and I do share it. Um, I come from an abusive relationship and it took a long time for me to be able to share this. It's not always easy to share it because I hid it away for many, many years. At the beginning, it was just really um, a mental abuse. And then it became physical. Mm. And I really didn't share it with anybody because I knew if I shared it with people, people would start treating him in a different way. And him was your previous husband? My previous husband, which would have made him realize that I'd spoken to somebody and my life would have been even more difficult. I just carried on as if life was just perfect. Um, I did what I did. A lot of people thought that I was a single parent, which I only discovered many, many years later because I did everything alone with my children. And it was okay. That was just what my life was. My daughter at the age of 15 became an adult, which is quite scary. Did you have any other children? I have a son and a daughter. And at that time, my daughter decides to go with me when I left. And your son? And my son decides to stay with his father. How old is he? My son at that stage was 13 years old. It was the most difficult time of my life. Sorry, I'm going to get emotional. It's okay. Um, and I was going through a very tough time. But I'm going to go back a little bit before that. At the age of 40, I took myself off for counselling. And I walked in, and I'm not going to mention this person's name, but as I walked in, he said to me, Tessa, if you do not love yourself, how can you expect anybody else to love you? And that, at 40 years old, was a rude awakening mm -hmm. for me. And that took me on a huge journey. And you know, my ex-husband didn't believe in any of that. He didn't believe in therapy. People don't need therapy. Those people are mad. So I used to pay cash and I would throw the receipt out the window as I was driving. So it was all in secretive and I never shared it with anybody. And I felt like I was living a double life, but it was something that I felt empowered with because I was doing it for myself. And I went on a long journey and he asked me, this guy that I went to said, you need to write a book and it has to be a hardcover book and you need to have this book with you 24 hours a day. Nobody else can touch it. Nobody else can read it. It is your book. And from the front, you need to write all the things that hurt you, that anger you, that upset you. But every day, you've got to find one thing that makes you smile. And you know, when you're going through those tough times, because there were some very tough times, very hard to find something that makes you smile. Even though you put on a smile and you think you're laughing and joking, you're not really. But you know, at the end of the day, I found something that made me smile. Mm -hmm. And I often sit back and I think, wow, what made me smile? And I was saying the other day, the only thing that made me smile one day, I looked at the green robots <laughs> and they had just changed those robots and they were making these new, I don't know what they're called even, the lights. They were more green than they used to be, the robots. And I looked at that robot and I thought, wow, that robot is so green. Why is it so different? And that I remember writing the book. And why that still sticks out today in my head, I don't know. But that was a journey of journeys. And he said, you'll see, when the back and the front of your book meet, you'll find that your soul has been healed. And God has helped you to heal. And you know, I looked at that and I thought, will I ever heal? Will I ever be whole? Will I ever be able to cope? At the age of 43, my daughter became the adult. And she said to me, Mom, you need to make a decision. And I'm not really going to go into the whole discussion that we had, but that is where I made that decision, that it was time that I had to move on. 
Yeah, to leave this man. Now. I had to leave the father of my children. With time, I've learned to forgive him. I've learned to forgive myself. But out of all of that, I've met the most amazing man who is my best friend. And everybody needs to know that. Out of every darkness, there is light. And I always thank Stephen because Stephen has allowed me to become the person that I am today. He encourages me to grow and to learn. Mm -hmm. And I had a huge awakening. We went to Israel and it was a huge journey for me. And we went to the Wailing Wall. Mm -hmm. And um, my daughter Daniela went with us. And that feeling that came over me at that Wailing Wall was the most amazing feeling. We walked where Jesus walked with my daughter. And I'm just grateful every day that I've come and drop in here. And my biggest thing is, and my wish is, to help women and children. I feel I've been put on this earth to help women and children, to uplift them and to let them know that no matter how bad things are, you can always make a difference. You can get up and there's always somebody there who will help you and will support you. And you can get up and you can be strong. Because you know what? There's no greater thing than women who stand together and support each other. I would love to just let everybody know that we have a mighty and powerful God. And yes, we go through these journeys, but it's to teach us lessons and it's to help us grow and become the person that we need to be. That was my journey. Those were lessons that I had to learn to become compassionate, to know how to help other people and to have the ear to listen. I didn't used to listen. You know why people have hardships? Tell me. It's to be better comforters. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your story today. I really think that you have touched someone, some one of the viewers today. I definitely do think so. And let's just quickly touch on your entrepreneurial side. You're an entrepreneur in what sense? I'm a network marketer. And I'm proud to say that. A lot of people go, oh, you do network marketing. Yes, I'm a network marketer. We've got a different way. And I love what I do every day. Mm. So um, we do the first human derived stem cell skincare product globally. The company is called Jeunesse. My team is called Reach 212 Degrees. And um, my husband and I do it together. And it's just been a phenomenal, phenomenal journey. Thank you so much for sharing today. And may you be blessed. Thank you.